Hey everyone, my presentation this week is on the American black bear, known by the scientific name Ursus americanus. This is from NJ Skylands 2, and this was Species 23. I think these guys are pretty charismatic critters. Uh, they're medium-sized bear species, though if you've ever come face-to-face -face with one in the wild, uh, I'd hesitate on how medium I'd consider them. Their size varies with sex, age, their health, and what season it is. Males typically are within a range of 125 to 550 pounds, whereas females are a bit smaller, 90 to 375 pounds. They have a broad skull, a narrow muzzle, and a large jaw and jaw hinge. Despite their name, their coat color can actually be anything from white or blonde, which is relatively rare, all the way up to jet black. They have a large brown and grayish claws, and they tend to be uniform in size in their front and hind legs. Their foreclaws do tend to be more sharp, and their claws are proportionally larger than any mid-sized bear species. If you've ever seen their tracks out hiking or something like that, I'm sure you can attest to that. Their foot soles are brown, leathery, and wrinkled, and they have small, rounded, and set-back ears. As you can see from the map on the left here, they're pretty widespread throughout North America. They can be found in largest numbers in sort of hard to reach terrains, undisturbed wilderness and woodlands. They've been seen in rural areas. The thick vegetation that grows in these places provides them with food sources like fruit, acorns, etc. They're often found in mountainous regions, but they are highly adaptable. They can survive in suburban and urban boundary zones and their preferred habitat does change according to the region they live in. For example, in Florida, they can be found in swamps. They do like wet meadows, high latitude tidal zones, river banks, roadsides, and brush fields. These areas all provide them with abundant food sources. Which brings me to their diet, which is highly versatile. They're omnivorous scavengers, meaning they'll basically eat anything. Early in spring, when they emerge from hibernation, carrion, which is rotting flesh, is vital for replenishing their fat and muscle. They like to eat grasses, flowers, wetland plants. They'll eat the shoots and buds off of trees and shrubs. Later in the season and around autumn, they'll start to forage for acorns, nuts, berries. In doing so, they play a role as seed dispersers in forest ecosystems and they're actually even known to raid squirrel caches for food. Around 85% of their diet is vegetation, though they do eat animals. Insects and larvae are the most common animal food source for them, but they love fish and they've been documented eating deer calves. They love honey. They'll actually scrape honeycombs out of hives and endure probably hundreds of bee stings to their face and ears just to get to it. And a big thing is that they can become reliant on human sources of food, like garbage and crops and stuff like that. That's why it's important if you live in an area with bears to make sure your garbage cans are sealed tightly and all that good stuff. Alright, let's talk a bit about their life history, their behavior specifically. They're considered highly intelligent. They've been known to open up jars, even doors. They use their large bodies to purposely intimidate other bears, other animals, even people if food is at stake. They regularly climb trees to feed, to escape confrontation, and to hibernate. These skills do decline with age, like most things. They're strong swimmers. They take to the water for what seems like fun, and obviously for food, you know, fish live in the water. They have more superior eyesight and hearing than people do and they have a very strong sense of smell. They say it's seven times that of dogs. They can be active any time of day, but they mainly forage for food as the sun goes down. They're territorial and mostly solitary. They characteristically mark their territory by rubbing, chewing, and clawing at tree bark. They can have some very large ranges, uh, up to a thousand square miles. And they're vocally communicative. They'll communicate with conspecifics using tongue clicks and grunts, They'll moan and, and blow air if they're feeling distressed, and if they're feeling threatened, they'll re do a deep-throated grunt, they'll do jaw clicks, and they'll pop their lips, stuff like that. Talk a bit about reproduction and parental care. Females will have their first litter at around three to five years of age. 
the breeding season are the summer months, and they usually give birth in January or February. Both sexes are promiscuous. There are documented cases of violent male-to-male competition for access to females, and their cubs are born highly dependent. They keep their eyes closed for the first 40 days. They need their mother's milk for 30 weeks, and they require maternal care for up to 18 months, so most females will have a new litter every two years. They reach sexual maturity at three years of age. They're full grown at five years. Their average lifespan in the wild is about 18 years. It's been said to not come between a mother and their cub. That's definitely advice I would follow. But I did read that they aren't mothers aren't as aggressive regarding their cubs as some grizzly bear species and polar bears. Like most bear species, they do hibernate. They'll winter in dens starting around October or November. Prior to that, they'll forage and put up to 30 pounds of fat on their bodies to prepare for that. Their hibernation period can be three to eight months, depending on what region they're in. They'll make dens in tree trunks, under logs and rocks, in caves and holes in the ground. Most of their dens are actually created by the bear. And when they're hibernating, their heart rate drops from 40 to 50 beats per minute to just eight. Their metabolic rate also slows considerably, and they can lose you know, up to 40% of their body weight while hibernating. They do remain mildly alert. Some may even forage if the winter is mild. And interestingly enough, their body temperature doesn't drop significantly. I think it might only go down to 87 degrees Fahrenheit from a normal temp of 95 degrees. I'd like to end by just talking a bit about human-animal conflict. I kind of feel like bears have a a bad rap as a problem animal. I've seen them in person in suburban areas like Hawthorne and Haledon. I've seen them hiking in Sussex County. I've seen them in Bergen County. I've seen them up in the Catskills. For the most part, they seem pretty docile and like they don't really want to have anything to do with people. They were traditionally hunted and admired by some Native American tribes. During European colonization, thousands of them were hunted for their meat, which was considered a delicacy, and their fur. Today, 28 states have official bear hunting seasons. Uh, Just short of 500,000 licenses are sold annually in the United States for these purposes. Tens of thousands of them are killed as a result of that legally. More are killed illegally by poaching, caught in traps, and in car accidents. This has been pretty politically controversial in New Jersey. This year, I happened to Google New Jersey bear hunt, and these were just four headlines that popped up, so you can see it's pretty polarizing. About 10 years ago, New Jersey reinstated a bear hunt after a five-year ban. Fairleigh Dickinson University did a poll back then, and 53% of residents did support the hunt, so as I said, it's politically controversial. There's going to be a bear hunting season this year as well. It's supposed to go from October 12th to December 19th. I'm somewhat conflicted on how to feel about this, but, you know, I do understand the need to control their population. They can be a problem, especially in more populated areas for children, for livestock, and for pets. But at the same time, I I sort of feel like maybe they're, it's not their fault that they happen to live in such a highly developed area. You know, as we continue to develop areas of New Jersey were essentially destroying their habitat and it's only natural that we're going to come into contact with them. I don't have an answer on, you know, how best to deal with certain individual bears that can be problems and stuff like that. So who knows? What do you guys think? All right. That's my presentation. Hope you enjoyed.